So this is how I think Sherlock faked his own death at the end of the Reichenbach fall, which was the last episode in series two of Sherlock on BBC One. Now, the first thing to remember is that Sherlock was ahead of Moriarty all the way to the end. It appeared on the roof as if he was a bit dumb, but he was only acting dumb because he did know exactly what was going to happen. He knew he was going to die, and we know that because he told Molly. Why did he tell Molly that he was going to die? Well, if you're going to die, but want to fake your own death, you need a body. Now, Molly worked in the mortuary. She had access to bodies. She's probably also a trained embalmer, so she can clean up a body, make it look like somebody else. And I wouldn't be surprised if she wasn't trained in prosthetics, took a cast of Sherlock's head, made a prosthetic, and fitted it to a different dead body. Now, he's going to need help to do this. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where the help came from. I suspect maybe Mycroft helped because Mycroft was at fault in getting him into trouble in the first place. He may also have used his homeless network to get help. Uh, the other thing to remember is that Holmes chose the meeting place where he would see Moriarty. This is important because by choosing the meeting place, Holmes has control of the stage. He can stage his own death. The other thing to remember is that the call that sent John to see Mrs. Hudson because she'd been shot turned out to be a fake. So we know that that was a fake call. Who made the call, I'm not sure. It could have been Mycroft, uh, and I think it probably was. The important thing was that John needed to be out of the way so that preparations could be made for Sherlock to fake his own death. Let's have a look at the crime scene. So this is a view of St. Bartholomew's looking down from above. That's the parapet wall, and Holmes ends up standing here on the parapet at his feet looking down this way. Now, in front of St. Bart is another building, which appears to be a single-storey block of garages. The road comes round here, goes up like that. Traffic can either travel past St. Bart's, or it can go around here and go between St. Bart's and the garages. Now, once on the roof, actually at one point, Moriarty peers over the edge and says to Holmes, oh, it looks like you've got an audience, because we can see down here there are people milling about. Now, this is the ground crew getting ready to help Holmes fake his own death. You'll also see that there are three benches up against the wall down here. And on this bench here, there appears to be somebody or something. And I believe that's the body waiting, ready to be put on the pavement. The other thing is, of course, once on the parapet, Holmes asks if Moriarty can give him a moment's privacy. This forces Moriarty to go over here, away from the parapet, which means he can't see now what's happening down below as the ground crew gets ready. When John arrives by taxi, which comes in about here, he gets out and immediately starts to go around to see Holmes uh, because he's on the roof. But Holmes sends him back back, go back, and he tells him to stand there. Now that's very important because now John has a building between him and the, uh, St. Bart's, which means he cannot see the pavement where Sherlock Holmes is going to land if he jumps. In fact, twice Holmes asks him to go back to where he's standing. Holmes then jumps. Watson sees him fall, but he can't see him land. This is because of the building in the way. Thinking that his friend is dead, John rushes around the corner again, and on the screen you'll just see the view of a lorry full of multicolored plastic bags pulling away. This is where Holmes landed, and the body, I think, is then tipped off the bench onto the pavement. The van goes away, Holmes is clear. As John comes round the corner, he's hit by a mysterious cyclist who knocks him over. Again, this is part of the plan. Uh, either John is concussed, he lays on the ground, or maybe he's even injected with a small amount of sedative because when he gets up, his vision is blurred and his speech is slurred. He walks towards his friend. Why is this important that John is injured or unable to see what, exactly what's going on? Because if he was fully compass mentis, he would realise that this body is not Holmes. It is another body in a prosthetic. He takes this body's pulse. He gets no pulse. This is a dead body. But it's not the body of Sherlock Holmes. 
So let's just recap that with some shots from the actual program. This is the scene Moriarty sees when he looks over the roof. Notice the people on the seat to the right. This is Moriarty being sent away from the roof so he can't see the preparation that's happening below. This is John getting out of the taxi and running around the garages. But of course, he's now going to be sent back by Sherlock Holmes, sending him back there. Go back, he says, go back. And John ends up standing there where the garages are between him so he can't see where the body will land. Sherlock jumps, we see him fall, down he goes. We don't see him land though. John runs round the corner after he's landed and sees a body in the road. And there's the truck with the plastic bags pulling away. That's where Sherlock landed. The cyclist hits John. He's either concussed or he's drugged, but he falls down. When he gets up, he's confused. His vision is blurred, his speech is slurred. He goes round to see where his friend is lying, but it's not his friend, it's another body with a prosthetic face. He takes the pulse. It's a dead body, there is no pulse. And then the body is whisked away by paramedics before anyone else discovers the deception. Sherlock Holmes is not dead, it's all been a fake. And that's how I think he faked his death.